Get off this property. Who are you? How did you get here? Exactly where is here, ma'am? California's all I know. There's only one road, and strangers wouldn't know it. Might be smart to figure I came by water. On this rocky coast, no boats ever land here. Maybe I dropped out of the sky. Look, ma'am, or miss, or whoever you are, I ain't any more pleased about being here than you are having me. All I want from you is the directions to the nearest town. Hey, come here! Who's that? Is he with you? He was. Can't you see I'm hurt? Well, aren't you going to help him? No. Don't take your gun with you. Why not? My advice. Not within his reach, anyway. And you? Try this. This might help. Thanks. Where do you people come from? What did he tell you? Nothing. I don't wonder. And I'll start off by introducing myself. My name is Frank Munson, Sheriff from Unity County, Utah, man. And this Ed Stone's his name. Is my prisoner. Is that true? If he's a sheriff, ask him to show you some credentials. Like a badge, for instance. You stole it. I arrested this man this morning in Bisbee, Arizona. I was flying up to Los Angeles, where I left my car. First a storm took us off course, then the plane developed motor trouble. We cracked up off the coast. Killed the pilot and broke my ankle. I'm taking him back to Utah. You're not taking me any place. If I head east through that pass, do I come to a town? This man's a fugitive from justice. If you help him, you'll be committing a crime. What town and how far? You're not going through that pass. Neither of you are going anywhere until we get this thing straightened out. We'd better go. I have to get the sheep in. Why should I go? Because she's got a gun. The only gun I see around. You looking for help? Looks like I got all the help I need. Looks like I picked up a right fine deputy. This way. in the main room. What about him? I'll watch him and Shep. Shep! Stay where you are. Looks like I got another deputy, too. <laughs> Maybe it's you he doesn't like.
that girl. It's been a long time. Out with the sheep, the last I saw her. I think she'd bring me something so I could fix up a stunt. Where are you going? There's a bedroom. Yeah, I know it. She married, do you think? All those men's duds around here. I don't expect to be here long enough to find out. You'll be here until I'm able to take you out. Even you don't believe that. Turn on the radio, why don't you? What for? Well, when the plane gets lost, somebody's bound to know about it. There are fellows whose job it is just to keep track of the planes. When one goes down, somebody looks for it. Coast Guard planes, most likely. What's the matter with it? It's sick. I think it's choked up. Let me see it. Come on over here. Let me take a look at you. Yeah, it was choked up. There you go. You know about sheep? Some. I'll put it in the bedroom, keep it warm. With two such great doctors in the house, somebody ought to look at my ankle. Just a minute, Mr. Munson. Mr. Munson. You get some rest now and you'll feel better. Meat's in the oven. Slice it so it'll cook faster. Ought to be done now. Did you put enough pepper and salt in? I did. Saw some biscuits you'd put out to rise, and I put those in too. Well, it looks good. You got anything I can use for a split? Any medication at all? Oh, you sure it's broken? Can you move it? Easy now. It's pretty sore. I'll keep trying. Got any horses in that stable? One I can buy? I'll pay you for it later. I warn you, Miss. I'm talking to her. I'm anxious to get started. We do have a Jeep, but my father's got it now. Your father? The sheriff had an idea you were married. No, there's just father. He gets romantic notions. This ankle isn't broken. No? Are you sure? Yeah, I think you're right. I, I can move it a little bit. You hear that, mister? My ankle isn't broken. Too bad. Yeah, the ligament's torn, probably. It's just as bad. You'll have to rest it for quite a while. Mind if I use your kitchen to wash up again? No, go ahead. I'll need to wash, too. Your dad be back tonight? No. No, not this late. Tomorrow? I don't know. He left two days ago, and... Sometimes he stays for about a week. Sometimes he goes on a on a little toot. Well, it's good for a man to go on a little toot once in a while. You say he took the jeep over the pass? No, he went he went to town to get, get some supplies. He thought he'd beat the rain. How far is town? Tell him nothing. If you help this man, even with information, you'll be guilty of a criminal act. You haven't even asked me what I'm taking him in for. I'm not interested. The man wants to be asked. Let me make one thing clear to both of you. I'm not interested in what he's done, and I'm not interested in your problem with him. I'm only interested in getting you both out of this place as soon as possible. My misfortune, because of the rain, it can't be tonight. But the rain will stop, and then you will both leave. Suits me fine. This man's a killer. He's wanted for murder. He shot a man down in cold blood for no reason. I've been tracking him for two years. He's nothing but a gunman. Treat a gunman like a gunman, I say. Speech like that, a man ought to have his badge. Speech like that sounds better from behind a piece of tin. Neighbors got any horses? No, the, the nearest neighbor's 10 miles away. I couldn't make it on foot, huh? No, no one could. It rains down here, the hills flood. There is one place, though, a place called Redgate. Water usually goes up to about 20 feet. I have to stay here tonight. I hate to put you out. I hate it, too. Nobody ever comes here, not even good men. You got a place outside I can sleep? You have to sleep in the father's room. You're English. Your father a school teacher? Funny place to find an English school teacher and his daughter. 
Might be interesting to find out why, if a man had the time. Well, Munson, tonight, tomorrow morning, what's the difference? I'll take care of tomorrow when it comes. In the meantime, you both better get something to eat. this bag and some supplies. Will you give me the directions? You're going to make me do it the hard way and explore. All right. But you can't see the pass from here. We have to walk up over the hills. You better not go any further. Unless you want a bullet in your back. With an empty rifle? Why you were sleeping. Don't try and follow us, Munson. 
It won't do you or your ankle any good. I almost forgot. Here's something that goes with your badge. understand that, don't you? Your father wouldn't like finding me here, huh? And when he does come, he'll get Mr. Munson out to a doctor. Sure. I hope you don't think that I'm taking your side against Mr. Munson. All those nice things that you did, like taking care of the lamb and getting supper ready, I, I saw through them easily. You're probably everything that Mr. Munson says you are. Oh, I'm a very bad character. My only fear is that you might not be able to get through. It usually takes days for the water to go down. But you will try, won't you? Nobody ever comes to your house, huh? Not anybody? That's right. What oh, cheering time. The rest of the time, it's just you and your father. If you think that... I don't think anything, except your father must be off his mind. He's the finest man in the world. Keeping you locked up in solitary? What'd you do? Were you a bad girl? Were you wild? I didn't do anything. I came here when I was hardly more than a child. And you must be blind. What's the matter with him? Can't he see? Does he know he's got a growing girl on his hands? What kind of life is that for a girl, being locked up like that? Don't you ever get to go out? What do you mean, get to go out? Out, freedom, out to civilization, out to town at least. When your father goes, doesn't he ever take you? If I want to go, I go. But you don't want to go. Why? Afraid you'll meet somebody? Somebody who'll pick you off? It's crazy. I don't think it's any of your business. It's crazy. This is as far as I go. Craziest setup I ever heard of. I'll go through the pass and head eastward. You'll probably see some wagon wheel tracks here and there if the rain hasn't washed them away. What's your name? Does it matter? Well, for one thing, I want to pay for these supplies. I like to pay for everything I get. Don't bother. For another thing, I'll be thinking about you. I'll have to. Grown girl locked up all of her life. It's Canham. Callie Canham. Well, Miss Cam, thank you and goodbye.
What you've done will be on your conscience. It won't accomplish anything. I'll track him down again. I'll find him if it takes a lifetime. Making it easy for you, Munson. I'm back. Making it tough for you, Miss Cannon. I'm sorry. But it won't be for long. I was a patient. Hey, let me out. There we go. There we are. Fix it. Try it yourself. You can do so much better. Well, maybe I will when you stop fooling around with it. This heavy stuff? Seems that's all they got around here. It doesn't do anything for me. What's that? Something of mine. Can I come in? Yes. What is she? Toe dancer? I suppose you could call it that. She's a ballerina. Round and around, huh? It's a pirouette she's doing. A pirouette what? Don't tell me you've never seen a ballerina. Me? A ballet? You mean that stuff you got in those books out there? You don't like music, either. Sure, I like music. Sure, I like music. Then why did you shut it off? With that heavy stuff? That was the London Philharmonic Symphony Orchestra, Mr. Stone. Well, so what? So what? Just that 140 men studied and sacrificed to learn something beautiful, and Mr. Ed Stone from Utah just shuts it off. That's so what? It's a good thing he didn't see you, Mr. Stone. Oh, I suppose that classifies me as an idiot. I, I didn't say that. 
Well, I'd like to know what you did say. Well, I was surprised, that's all. Just, just surprised. You live out in the world, and you can see and hear the beautiful. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. She's beginning to run down. Want me to wind her up? No, I didn't. Can I sit down? Yes. Guess you're pretty lonely. No, I have my books and my radio and my records. I enjoy myself. You mean until a couple of characters like us come along and spoil it? Don't feel sorry for me, Mr. Stone. I don't feel sorry for you. I'm beginning to feel sorry for myself. Well, I've been around a little bit. Here you are, locked up in this valley in the middle of nowhere. You see more than I see, and you know more than I know. Just think it's a dirty shame that your old man could do something like Please that. Please don't say that. A pretty girl like you, intelligent, no telling what you could have done with yourself. Been going over some of your books, all those funny names. But you know them all by heart. I know some of them. Pavlova and Casavina, Charlotte Grease. They're some of the greats of yesterday. Today we have Moira Shearer, Margot Fontaine, Alicia Markova. I've often wondered how they lived, I must say. Why? So you go around and around? To be a ballerina or a star would give one a chance to get out of this round and round, as you call it. <laughs> Today, Sunday? Rainy Sunday? You shouldn't have hidden that rifle, you had. You had no right to hide it. As an officer, I have the right to commandeer any weapons I need in the pursuit of my duty. That's the law. As a law-abiding person, if you are a law-abiding person, you ought to help me in every way possible. That's the law, too. I don't want to run the risk of any bloodshed, Mr. Munson. I don't care if it's the law or not. That's my decision. Hey, I think I got it. It's Chopin, isn't it? Munson would rather hear a news program. I just lost it. What are you doing? Checking manuscript. Manuscript? Yeah, it's my father's book. That thing a book? W well, it will be. There's only a little more than half of it done now. Some book. So is the author. He's a school teacher, you said. No, you said. Father taught at Oxford. Oxford? It's the biggest, isn't it? We like to think so. He taught philosophy there. Oh, a real brainy man. Yes. That makes it crazier than ever. Giving up all that for this. Why? The world sickened him. Well, he fought in a war, the First World War. He knew it wouldn't be the last, there'd be a second and a third and a fourth if the world weren't destroyed. And like many other intellectual men, he wanted to find peace and isolation. In other words, he ran. Mr. Munson, you should put some weight on that foot. Try walking around a bit. It'll heal much faster. Yeah, it hurts like blazes. I think it's getting worse. When a man like my father has something to say, I think he should be given the chance to say it. Don't you think? Has he got the answers in that thing? The answers? The answers. All I ever read are some comics, some detective stories, and some Western magazines. I'm sure you've read more than that, haven't you? I've read the Bible. Let's take the Bible, for instance. Adam and Eve in the garden. 
That man Adam couldn't stand it till he climbed the tree of knowledge. He got slapped down for it, too, but good. That man's been trying to climb that tree ever since. That's what I'm talking about. Because your old man's got the answers to that in that book. Well, would you like to hear some of it? You want to hear some philosophy, Munson? I can stand it if you can. Rainy Sunday, why not? I wish Father was here to read it. You should pay some attention to the 12th and 13th centuries. Man's discomfort, his real discomfort in this world, began not long after that. I know what you're thinking. Discomfort in our age of medicine, dentistry, automobiles and aeroplanes. It is also the age of the hydrogen bomb. In olden times, man knew just where he stood. He stood on a flat world. Directly above him was God in his heaven, and he could talk to him. Directly below him was Satan, and he was told how to avoid him. In his simple world, man was happier and more comfortable than he is today. I mean, psychic man in his... Psychic in his man? Room. Oh, what uh, he is, yeah. Uh, in relation to his world. In the modern, complicated world, man breaks down under strain, bewilderment, and disillusion. He gets lost, gets sick, goes crazy, commits suicide. I cannot foretell the future of this world except to say that it will not get any simpler. Worry and doubt bring on a bellyache, and man is building up the biggest psychic bellyache in history. Do you understand that stuff, Munson? Just a lot of words. Psychic bellyache. Man has embarked upon an insane life of destruction, which can destroy not only his enemies, but himself. And nothing can save man unless he can again find God. But where is God, man asks himself, in a universe of 100 million billion planetary stars? I think that's enough. That's philosophy? Sounds more like common sense. And that's what good philosophy is. You got a philosophy, Munson? Yeah, I got one. There's right and wrong, there's black and white. There's what's lawful and what's unlawful. A man lives by the law or dies by it. Do you have a philosophy? Yeah. Freedom. Every meaning of the word. The hardest thing for a man to get and the easiest for him to lose. You can lose it in a lot of ways. Through a woman, the, the wrong kind of a woman, or by being boxed in like your father felt he was boxed in over there. Freedom of mind and body and spirit. What I live by. I've got it and I don't intend to lose it. No one's going to put me in jail. Not anybody. Not for any reason. Be a nice day, what's left of it. Nice enough. When the weather breaks, does it always hold like this? You're wondering when the water in the parcel go down. You'll know it's down when my father comes home. I don't plan to wait. You're going to take a look for yourself? That's right. I'll walk part of the way with you. Why? Well, I guess I want to talk to you. Shep will watch the flock.
want to tell me about what happened in Utah? Hasn't Munson said enough? Well, he's talked a lot, and you said very little. He said you were a killer. That's what he said. But you're not. I killed a man. I don't deny it. Yes, but you're not a killer. There's a difference? Well, the other night when you got your hands on my rifle, you just took away the shell. You could have taken the rifle and shot Mr. Munson. He was asleep. Shot him, and all your troubles would have been over. Too bad I didn't think about it. You did. It was the first thing you thought about. It had to be. You could have shot him down and left him on my hands. That would have made you a killer. Where did it happen? A town called Vernal. Just a town. Unitar Basin. You an Indian reservation part of it. It's a valley. Well, it's bigger than a valley. The Green River runs through. Doesn't stop, runs right through it. It's an all right town. A few stores and a post office. Well, there's quite a story about that post office. You see, there isn't a railroad within 50 miles of the place. So when the federal government decided to build the post office, they had to ship in every brick by parcel post. OK, I haven't heard about the post office, and you haven't heard about the town. But did your family live there? No. No, they lived in a bigger place called Provo. I don't remember them much. They were washed out in a flash flood up in Provo Canyon. So I lived with an uncle for a while, and then I drifted out into the basin. I liked it. Nice, dry country. You bored? No, no, of course not. Has a nice backdrop, too. Real high mountains, and they're white from September to April. Great deer hunting in the winter, if you like snow. Sheep country? Oh, we'll run some sheep and raise some turkeys. Raise a lot of devil, too. <laughs> I raised plenty of it myself, and I should have been out trying to learn something for myself. Oh, it's Saturday night dances and that kind of stuff. Indian girls. Your old man never taught you anything like that. Was it over a girl? That I shot Munson's brother? His brother? No, it wasn't over a girl. He owed me some money. You mean you shot a man because he owed you some money? No, ma'am, because he wouldn't pay me and he didn't intend to. And being who he was, he figured he wouldn't have to. So we fought about it. We are both liquored up, but all the same, he pulled his pistol and he nicked me with his first shot. That's when I let him have it. Then you killed him in self-defense. I could be telling you a pack of lies. You could be. Maybe you are. But lying or not, tell me. You're trembling. I'm sorry. Thank you. Why don't you go home and I'll bring the sheep in when it's time? Aren't you going to take a look at the pass? That can wait. some exercise. You been with him? Must have had a good time. You have a dirty mouth, Mr. Munson.
Probably lucky for us. I don't like my sheet spoiled. Washed again. Oh, I don't mean about that. What you did just now was just impulse. A woman's impulse. You didn't stop to think about the plane the same way I did. You were thinking about your wash. How you'd have to do it over. No, I owe you an apology for what I said before. What I hinted about you and Ed Stone. But I leave it to you to understand that when a pretty girl like you is around, a man gets ideas. A beautiful girl, if I may say so, Miss Camp. Did he ever tell you how he got into trouble? Yes, he did. After I asked him, though. What did he say? Try to enlist your sympathy, I suppose, huh? No. No, he didn't. Not that I'd blame him. Because after all, you hold the key to everything that's going to happen. You know that. You have a little hand, Miss Cannon. A woman's hand. But it holds the whip between me and Ed Stone. That's why I wouldn't have blamed him if he had. Uh, Appeal to you, I mean. Just like I'm appealing to you now. Earlier in the day, I had the idea I might offer you money. Quite a lot of money. Up to a hundred dollars, say. For what? Just to tell me where you hid your rifle. See now, that would have been a mistake. I'm glad you could see that, Mr. Munson. No, that wouldn't have been a good idea at all. But there is one question I must ask, Miss Cannon. Which side are you on between me and Stone? I hope you don't mind my asking. I suppose it's your duty. I think it is. So I'll answer you. If a man is in trouble, I think he should face his trouble. In other words, you mean that the right thing, the lawful thing, is that this man be kept here until I'm able to take him out. I mean what I said, Mr. Munson. You're the one who can either keep him here or let him go. You know that, don't you? time in a woman's life when she's most beautiful. I suppose you think it's funny to hear me talk about women. But I've got a pretty wife at home. I know what a pretty woman can do to a man. She can drive him out of his mind. Make him forget everything but her. And there's just one time when a woman reaches the peak of her power over a man. That's when she's just becoming a woman.
trying out my ankle. I think I tore the ligament loose again. You seen Callie anywhere? What did you do to that girl today? Pretty girl like that, too. She said as soon as you got home to tell you she wanted to see you. She went off by the water tower or someone. I said she wanted to see you right away. Oh, wait a minute. Turn around. Did you know that I had a dress? What are we going to do about us? What are we going to do? You weren't in my plans. I hadn't counted on you. Anyone like you? I hadn't expected you. It's impossible. You and me. Quite impossible. Great Britain and the state of Utah.
uh, figure to stay around here a while now, Ed? I asked you a question. You asked me a question? The answer is no. Slept. He cleared out. You're lying. He wouldn't go without telling me. There, you see? Where have you been? Munson said that you'd gone. I could have been gone. The water's down the pass. So I, I came back to say that I... You came back to say goodbye. That's right. After yesterday? Yes. But you promised me that you'd... But talking don't... about going to jail is one thing. And walking into it's another. Miss Cannon, I want that rifle. I'm not fooling anymore. Or asking. <laughs> these men. What are you doing here? You're the owner here, I take it, huh? That's right. You're on my property. I'm Kelly's father. I'm Sheriff Munson. This man's my prisoner. Is he badly hurt? No, he's just knocked out. He was trying to escape. There's more to it than that, Father. Wait till you hear both sides of the story. You won't get the straight of it from her. What's my rifle doing here? Munson tried to steal it. He's been working on her. Got her all mixed up. You better go in the house. Do as I tell you, Kelly.
glad you'd come, Mr. Cannon. So am I. You say she was trying to help him escape? I'm afraid so. Hmm. Well, you better take care of your prisoner. I'll go and talk to her. Now, Kelly, I want you to tell me, in an orderly fashion, what's been happening here. And if you can, without emotion. I'll try. They've been chewing the fat a long time. What's the matter? You nervous? And that's all of it, piece by piece, as it happened. All of it is about enough, I should say. I won't pretend I'm not shocked, Kelly. I leave here for three or four days, not even a week. And I come back to find our whole private little world quite changed. By the chance visit of these two strangers. Hasn't changed between us, has it? It will take a very great deal to do that. Will you talk to Ed? To Ed? Oh, you mean this fugitive? I wish you wouldn't call him that. Well, it's what he is, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. You must be famished. I'll get you something to eat. Uh, no. No, not to eat, thanks. Understand one thing. If I don't blame you, I blame myself, the way I brought you up. I've often grieved that your mother didn't live, but never as much as now. I haven't prepared you for life. You've had no friends, you've made the acquaintance of very few men. You've been able to acquire a yardstick by which you could measure the character of this... this fellow. And that means I'm in trouble, too. Will you help us? I'll help you. The best way I know how. But I owe it to the officer of the law to speak to him first. Mr. Bunsen, I'd like to have a word with you, if you please. Would you come into the house, Ed? Is that all right with you, Mr. Cannon? Ask me if it's all right. I trust my daughter completely, Mr. Munson. You can place your trust in the fact that I'm in possession of this. Now, Mr. Munson, may I have your version of what happened in Utah? He killed a man. He killed my brother. No, no, just give me the facts, the official facts, as sheriff as if the victim were not your brother. Uh, that's fair enough. A car and his jury indicted him for manslaughter. He made a getaway. A manslaughter? Not murder. Manslaughter or murder. My brother is just as dead. Guess your father's pretty upset. Yes, he is. He's got a right to be. He comes home here and finds a couple of guys fighting all over the place and finds out one of them's trying to run off with his daughter. He's behaving like a father. He's worried about me. Well, he's right. I'm on his side. Like I told you, I got to get out of here and out of your life. What would you do? Sit around here and wait while I serve a term in jail? You think that's what I want for you? I told you I loved you, Ed. Thank you, Mr. Munson. Well, now I think I'll step inside and have a little chat with Kelly and the young man. What good can come of that? Oh, I don't know. I'm not particularly looking for any good to come of it, except for Kelly. You see, for one thing, I promised her I'd have a talk to this young man, and I never go back on my word to her. And for another, 
Kelly's feelings are involved. Very seriously involved. I think you can understand my wish to get her out of this with as little damage to her heart as possible. Well, yes, I can understand that, but I still think no good can come of it. Well, perhaps this will set your mind at rest concerning my intentions, Sheriff Munson. Take all the time you want to in there. Thank you. You're very considerate. Is he feeling all right? I'll be okay. Good. Now, young men, there are two separate aspects to this whole thing. And the first involves the circumstances that got you into trouble with the law. I don't want to have to deal with any of that. We have courts to take care of such things. That's right. Frankly, I should prefer not to be interested in you at all, but I have to be because of Callie. I left her here for a few days, believing that though alone, she was secure. I come back to find her involved with a stranger, whose chief claim to fame seems to be that he has successfully evaded being brought to trial. Tell him your side of that. Your father wants to have his say, so let him have it. I have an opinion regarding crimes of violence and about men like you who commit them. I think they're weak men who allow their emotions to overcome their intelligence. Emotions of hatred or fear or insecurity. Oh, there's nothing surprising in it. Men kill their fellow men every day. Mala males, malus animus. What's that? Oh, excuse me, Latin. Now, what I mean to say is that perhaps all men are killers by nature. I don't believe that human nature is God's most beautiful creation. Or perhaps he made men good and then spoiled himself. <laughs> How can we doubt this when we see whole nations whose rulers, dominated by passion and hatred, threaten to destroy the world? You write a good book, Mr. Canham. Callie read part of it. I liked what I heard. But what's your theory's got to do with us? Just this, young man. Mr. Munson says you're a killer. Kelly claims you're not. I don't know you. I don't presume to be your judge. The dividing line between those who resort to violence and those who don't may be a very thin line, but it's a definite line. Dividing the man of intelligence from the beast. I'm Kelly's father, and I love her very much. You should. Her happiness is the most important thing in the world to me. Is that why you keep her locked up like this? I suppose you mean I've been selfish. I told Callie I thought you were blind. Well, I suppose you may be right. I think you proved that. A girl alone? <laughs> First man who comes along. I also told her I'd try to get away, if I could get away, to keep from hurting her anymore. Now, what else could I do? Is that true? He is. Oh, I admit I'm surprised. Agreeably surprised. Well, in that case, Perhaps I'm not too late in what I've done. I, um, I've sold the ranch, Kelly. I'm going to take you out in the world and give you your chance. Oh, I should have done it long ago. You've sold our home? Oh, but sold it. I met Joe Edwards in town. You know, he's always wanted this place to add to his own. I brought back a bill of sale for your approval. For as long as I can remember, neither Kelly nor I have ever done anything without each other's complete approval. That is, up to now. Daddy, I'd rather do anything than hurt you, but I, I have to say how I feel. I love Ed. I want to go with him and stand by him. I want to live with him for the rest of my life. I see. I think Kelly has the right to know, and I think I have the right to know, just what it is you're afraid of back in Utah. Well, it's a little mixed up to explain. You see, the Munsons back home are very strong. I mean, the family. There's a whole clan of them. Well, is the judge one of them? No. Self-defense? You might go scot-free. Not me. I don't have a good name back home. So I was a little wild, so I didn't build up a very good reputation. What's the maximum penalty for manslaughter in Utah? Ten years? I'd never get to Utah. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'll have to explain a little bit more about Munson to you. You see, he's not the sheriff. I mean, not the regular sheriff. He had himself deputized so he could go after me. He 
Jeff after me for two years till he finally caught me. He left his car in Los Angeles, and he said we'd drive back to Utah in it. Well, we might start out that way, but Munson never let me get there alive. You can't prove that? I can prove it by getting shot. You've thought of it. You're convinced of it. But you can't prove it. I think I can. I'll tell Munson I'll go back, but I won't go back with him. I'll tell him I'll go back and turn myself in when I get home. He'd never believe it. Why should he? He'll believe you. You tell him. Tell him I promise, and I will promise. Then give him Callie's rifle, and we'll see what he'll do. But you and Callie keep out of sight, because he won't do anything in front of witnesses. I've already given him the rifle. Good. Then tell him to come in. You've both gone crazy. Take the Jeep. When you get to town, give it to one of the boys in the garage. We'll drive it home. Keys in it? Look in the glove compartment. Thanks. I'm sorry, Kelly. him permission to use the jeep. He's given me his word that he'll go back to Utah, but not with you. I believe him. See you in Utah. Have you forgotten that I keep my revolver in the glove compartment of the Jeep? I put a gun within his reach. Whether he uses it or not is up to him. to find out now. Drop it. 
Drop it. I'm out of shells anyway. I'm not. Get on your feet. Get up. Turn around. Turn around. That's all, Munson. Well, Mr. Munson, you owe your life to your prisoner. I hope you remember that. I'll remember it. Very interesting twist of the mosaic law, I'd say. An eye for an eye, a life for a life, your life for your brother's life. Very interesting. Now, oh, here comes Kelly. Where's she going? Same place I'm going. Same place we're all going. Here, yeah, what's the name of that place? Vernal, Utah. Vernal, eh? Well, sounds green anyway. <laughs> oh, goodbye, Shep. Be a good dog now. Take care of the place till Joe gets down. <laughs> don't want to stay, eh? Well, I don't blame you. Time we all moved along. All right, first stop, Utah.